Respiratory infection risk factors include defective cough reflex, such as patients in coma and with neuromuscular disorders, defective ciliary function, for example, loss of cilia due to squamous metaplasia, mucus disorders, including cystic fibrosis and chronic bronchitis, disorders of the immune system, poor macrophage function and pulmonary edema. Symptoms of acute bronchitis include productive cough, tachypnea and dyspnea. Acute bronchitis is usually caused by a virus, commonly RSV. Bacterial causes include Haemophilus, influenzae and strep pneumoniae. Acute bronchitis may also occur on the background of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or due to a chemical injury such as inhalation of smoke, chlorine or sulphur dioxide. This is a severe case of acute tracheobronchitis. The trachea and bronchi contain a purulent exudate. Bronchiolitis is caused by a viral infection, usually RSV. It occurs in infants. Symptoms include acute respiratory distress, dyspnea and tachypnea, and it often occurs with bronchopneumonia. Pneumonia is infection of distal airways affecting alveoli. There is a protein-rich exudate containing polymorphs, lymphocytes and macrophages, Pneumonia may be primary or secondary to another condition and the two main types of pneumonia are bronchopneumonia and lobar pneumonia. Bronchopneumonia is caused by infection spreading from bronchi and bronchioles into adjacent alveoli. It occurs at the extremes of age in the very young and the very old. Predisposing factors for bronchopneumonia include poor clearance of respiratory secretions, for example postoperatively, and in patients with cystic fibrosis. It often occurs in debilitated patients, such as those suffering from cancer, heart failure, stroke, etc. It may follow acute bronchitis, and patients suffering from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease are often at risk of developing bronchopneumonia. Organisms causing bronchopneumonia include staphylococci, streptococci and Haemophilus influenzae. Bronchopneumonia affects the bases of the lungs and is often bilateral. The patients become septicemic and shocked with reduced levels of consciousness. Complications include abscess formation, pleural infection and septicemia. This is the lung from a patient who died from bronchopneumonia. The pale foci you can see towards the right of the photograph are foci of consolidation, indicative of bronchopneumonia. This is a closer up view of the white foci of consolidation, typical of bronchopneumonia. This is the appearance of bronchopneumonia down the microscope. The inflammation is limited to the alveoli around the terminal bronchiole. Lobar pneumonia affects most or the entire lobe of a lung. It affects otherwise healthy adults, typically 20 to 50 years old. Symptoms include fever and a productive cough. The causative organism in most cases is strep pneumoniae. Klebsiella may cause lobar pneumonia in elderly, diabetic and alcoholic patients. The lower lobe of this lung shows features of lobar pneumonia. It is solid and airless. Histologically, the alveoli contain a diffuse infiltrate containing predominantly neutrophil polymorphs. Lobar pneumonia is an acute, severe illness. Usually there is complete recovery with early treatment. Sometimes there is scarring of the lung by an organised exudate with abscess formation and permanent lung dysfunction. Community acquired pneumonia is usually caused by gram-positive bacteria such as Streptococcus pneumoniae and Haemophilus influenzae. 
Hospital-acquired pneumonia is usually caused by gram-negative organisms such as E. coli, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas and Proteus. Predisposing factors include old age, smoking, debility and mechanical ventilation. In atypical pneumonias, the inflammation is situated in the alveolar septi and the pneumonia occurs without consolidation, hence the term atypical. Symptoms include fever, dyspnea and dry cough. The causes include viruses, rickettsia and chlamydia. Unusual organisms causing pneumonia include Legionella, psittacosis and histoplasmosis. Legionnaire's disease is caused by exposure to contaminated water or air conditioning supplies. Psittacosis is caused by exposure to the droppings from infected birds, particularly parrots. Histoplasmosis is a disease of the Midwest and Southeast USA. It is caused by fungal spores inhaled from the dust. The features of histoplasmosis are similar to those of TB. Pneumonias in immunosuppressed patients may be caused by fungi such as Candida, Aspergillus and Cryptococcus, viruses including CMV, herpes simplex and measles, mycobacteria such as Mycobacterium tuberculosis and atypical Mycobacteria and Pneumocystis carinii, especially in HIV patients. This lung biopsy from an HIV patient shows infection with pneumocystis. The organisms are stained black. Lung is the commonest site for tuberculosis. Predisposing factors include alcoholism, drug abuse, diabetes and immunosuppression. In cases of tuberculosis there is often reactivation of primary or secondary lesions. This is the lung from a patient who died of tuberculosis. The tuberculosis caused a huge cavitating lesion in the lung. This is a zeal nielsen or ZN stain for TB. The organisms are stained red and stand out against the blue background. Bronchiectasis is caused by abnormal dilatation of a main bronchus. Clinically there is a purulent cough with hemoptysis. Bronchiectasis is caused by bronchial obstruction, for example, foreign body and tumour. Other conditions predisposing to bronchiectasis include cystic fibrosis, emotile cilia, immunodeficiency, especially hypogammaglobulinemia, or sometimes the cause is idiopathic or unknown. Lung abscesses may follow pneumonia, an infarct, aspiration and bronchiectasis. Complications include empyema, pneumothorax, hemorrhage, bacteremia and cerebral abscess. The pointer in this picture indicates a lung abscess.